Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, the last time I was processing a set of images, I ran across something that couldn't really figure out what was going on. And uh, as I started looking into it, I realized that I discovered something new. Um, I'm not the first person to discover it, but it was new to me. And so I thought it was a really interesting way to, to think about how when you're going through this hobby, even though we are taking pictures of the same things that we see all over the place from other people, uh, there's always room in there for discovery. You know, sometimes it's personal discovery. Sometimes it can be discovery of a new way to, to get something done. Uh, and you never know kind of what you're going to find uh, when you really get into it. Oh, and at the end of the episode, I'm going to knock out one of the viewer comments and show my little spaceship collection here behind me. I'm sure this is very hard to tell on YouTube, but for here, you can tell it just is smoothing everything out really nicely. Now that is something I just noticed in here. Which is, I don't know if those are some hot pixels that didn't get removed in processing or what? Just an interest of trying to figure out what the heck on those little dots. Let me look here, my other ones. Yep, I've got it there. Got it there. And I've got it there, so it's in all of those. Guessing that means got something similar going on in here. Here, I'm gonna. Here's what I'm gonna do. Let me zoom in on that. And then I'm gonna take that same zoom in over to this image. Yep, I've got a little streak right there. Huh. I wonder, because these images were not taken in order, like they weren't taken, um, you know, a, uh, an HA and then an O3 and then an S2. Instead, they were they were taking all HA and then I believe all O3 and then all S2. They all just line up so well. I'm wondering if I might have caught something that was moving slightly throughout the night and bright enough to show up. But as you can see, it showed up for different color patterns. And that's why it's just a white stripe in that area there. I wonder if I caught an asteroid or a planet or something. Well, definitely not a bright planet, but hmm. I'm going to pause the video. I am going to go look into that. I might have caught something kind of neat there. Okay, so before I load up some images to blink through this, I just looked at the timestamps of my individual subframes. And, you know, as I said, this, this particular image here is the SHO. And the order that I took my frames in was all of my O3 first, which would be the blue channel in this one. And then I took all the H alpha, which would be the green channel in this combination. And then I took the S2, which would be the red channel in this one. So I caught something wandering through my frame very, very slowly, image to image. Very interesting. Let's see if we can find it. So let's take a look. It looks like it's pretty bright in the red channel here, which would be my S2s. So let's take a look at, let's blink my S2s. So these are the raw frames before any calibration or anything. Up 
here. Let's go ahead and apply an auto STF on all of them, or at least the same histogram. All right, so where in the image are we? Because this is all before the crop, or all after the crop happened. And up, so that and that are there. So let's scoot you over. There's the two, and the two, and then we've got that one there. So it should be right in here. One, two, three. It looks like the red is covering up that third one. So let's just start and zoom in a little bit more. So it's this triangle of stars that we're looking up here. And when I say the third one, it's possible that is the third one. So let's just start stepping through. Uh, they're not aligned, but I think that's my guy. So let's do this again with my registered images. That's right there. So these here, and that is my likely suspect. So let's start to step through. Oh, I'll be damned. The damn thing's moving. Look at it. Look at it go. I'm just going to hit play. Watch it go. Oh, what are you? Oh, I am super excited, guys. I want to see what that is. I have found my first UFO, everybody. Uh, or, you know by the strict definition and it is unidentified and it was flying and it is an object of some kind i think i probably found an asteroid or something so or maybe it's a planet and it was just very dim very exciting all right so minor mystery solved so my little moving guy here is in fact an asteroid uh, I used my planetarium app that I have on my iPad that I use to control my telescope, which I'm using Sky Safari Pro, um, and I set it to pull up the field of view for my telescope for this object, um, rolled it back to the time that I was taking these images at, and then also turned on the ability to show the asteroids and to put the name on them uh, for the bright ones. And then I started looking to see what was really sitting there in the right place. Um, and so I found a couple of likely candidates that were in the neighborhood there. And then I rotated my image that I had here into kind of matching what things were looking up on my iPad. And sure enough, in between the or in the what I call it call the triangle of three double stars here I'll zoom in a little bit more and they're probably they may not be truly double stars but it was three points of two stars next to each other this one here that one there and that one there all of which uh, showed in my iPad right between those starting here at that time was an asteroid moving right across that path and then it turns out that asteroid is 389 industria um, so it's a you know a main belt asteroid which is pretty cool there uh, this wasn't you know the movie armageddon where i found something that was destroying the earth so that's good um, an s type asteroid um, so approximately 17 percent of them are of that type making it the second most common of them okay uh, and discovered back in 1894 in Nice. And I'd like to say it's nice because I feel, hey, pretty nice about doing this. Uh, one other thing I noticed when I was uh, looking this one up uh, that I thought was cool here, its name is Latin for diligence. So that makes me pretty happy because I kind of only found that <laughs> by doing my diligence on these photos here. So 389 Industria. Glad to meet you. And I think for that, I am going to leave this in the image. Even though it's kind of a weird color streak, for me, this now becomes something very unique. Something that, that 
taught me something new, made me kind of go down a rabbit hole to find something that I'd never found before. And, uh, and who knows, you know, maybe that'll, that'll get me to start inspecting my images a little bit more. Um, I hope that was interesting for you guys. <laughs> uh, you know, after that digression, you know, we'll get back into it in a minute here once I kind of reset everything around. But, you know, when you're uh, looking at your images, you know, when you see something crazy like that, you know, think about it for a minute before you just go and, uh, you know, apply a stricter, uh, you know, elimination routine or something, because who knows? Maybe you'll find a little friend for the evening that uh, that can brighten your day. All right, so a bit of a time jump here. It's the next day. Had work and life and all that kind of come into play. But, uh, you know, just before I get back into anything else, you know, I was thinking all day about this little guy here running through. And... You know, one thing it really made me think about is like how cool it is to still have discovery out there, right? Now, granted, yeah, this this asteroid was discovered, you know, back in the 1800s, but for me, I just discovered it, you know, yesterday, you know, and so that's something that I think I take for granted, and maybe all of us do if we're in this hobby. We go and take pictures of things that other people have seen or, or known objects and stuff like that. But, you know, how great is it to find something you weren't expecting? To find something new, at least to you. So, you know, this, you know, really kind of kind of tickled my fancy a little bit. And I think in future, you know, kind of imaging sessions, I may do some things to try to look more for this kind of stuff. You know, this one was readily apparent to me because of the kind of color differences here, but there are other ways to, to try to spot these things, you know, and I'm probably gonna look into some of that and spend a little bit more time looking for some of this stuff. Who knows, maybe I'll find one that someone hasn't found before. Who knows, maybe you will. So. All right, so let's take a look at my ship collection. So I'm a big Lego Star Wars fan in general, uh, and I've got a, quite a few of the uh, the Lego Master Builder sets, um, the UCS sets for uh, for the Star Wars ships. I've got the Snow Speeder there, as well as the Y Wing and Boba Fett Slave One, and then this one is a Imperial Shuttle, not the UCS set, but uh, but one I like quite a bit anyways. Um, and then also just some other ship models. So uh, Firefly, uh, the Serenity from the Firefly show, uh, the original uh, refit Enterprise from, uh, from the motion picture in Star Trek II, which is probably my favorite of the original Enterprises. And then one of my favorites from Next Generation, the, uh, the Enterprise E. The sovereign class there and then on the top here I have the uh, Tanti 4 rebel blockade runner set uh, which I really really liked and then you know no self-respecting spaceship set would be complete without probably one of the best spaceships we've ever made the Saturn 5 rocket uh, this is one of the Lego ideas sets uh, that came out in the last couple of years uh, that I really loved. It's over three feet long um, and it comes with a splashdown capsule as well as a little mini scale LEM there that can actually be stowed in the payload area of the rocket itself, which is pretty cool. So that is my Starship collection that I have at the moment here. Uh, hopefully one of these days uh, it'll grow even more, but uh, I think I've filled up my shelf space for the time being. And that's it for this time. Until next time, I wish everybody clear skies. Thanks.